Hi, I'm Gary Cassini. And I'm Drenda. And there may be a reason why you find yourself not having everything the Bible says. Faith isn't always enough. That's right. Today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're talking about the other side of faith. So many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of Newton's Law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and the ship. you got to be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing, and we're going to answer a question that we get so many times. Why isn't it working? Gary, why isn't it working? The Bible says this should be happening. I have, I've, I've done what I think the Bible says to do, and yet, well, I think we all know people that have been claiming scriptures for years, and their life hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a lot of reasons for that, Drenda, you know, maybe learning how the kingdom operates, but... There's one reason that people seem to overlook, and you had a story that I think illustrates it really well. Could you quote <laughs> yeah. that story? Well, there was a man, and a, a great flood came, and he was on his house, and he was trying to figure out what to do, and he cried out to God, and he asked, you know, God, save me, save me. And a boat comes by, offers him a ride. He goes, no thanks, God will save me. Then later, he's struggling more. He climbs at the top of the roof of his house and a helicopter comes and offers him a ride. And he says, no thanks, God will save me. Then he is actually now overtaken by water. So he starts to swim and he's like, God save me. Someone throws him a lifesaver and he says, no thanks, God will save me. Finally, he drowns. And when he gets to heaven, he says to God, why didn't you save me? And then God said, I sent three opportunities, but you wouldn't listen. <laughs> That's right. You know, a great scripture in James chapter 1, verse 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word, but do what it says. You know, we have our part to play. The other side of faith is a, a, a missing part. You know, people trying to put, uh, spiritualize everything. You know, like, like this story, God's going to do it. You know, God's going to take care of it. And thank God for the, the word of God and the kingdom of God. All the answers are there. But we live in the earth realm. That's right. And in the financial realm, when we're dealing with finances, that's an area where a lot of times people confuse. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how to mix faith with their works. So they don't make any plans or preparations to win, su succeed financially. Right. And then they end up blaming right. God. And that's the thing right. we don't want is we don't want people, we don't want you to miss out on God's promises. And we also don't want God blamed when people do miss out. I'd like to take you to Luke chapter 5, and I want to show you an example in the Word of God concerning what we're talking about, the other side of faith. Verse number 1, Jesus is, of course, walking by the lake, the people crowding around him and listening to the Word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the, no one of the boats and, and began to preach. And, of course, you know the story where after he preached, he told Peter to put out into the deep water, and they caught so many fish that two boats about sank. They fished all night and caught nothing. Now we see the kingdom operating, and now they catch so many fish, the boats about sink. Mm -hmm. Now we have taught so many valuable kingdom lessons from this story on partnership, uh, how to receive, how did the Holy Spirit give them the insight? How did, it, how did those fish show up? We have all, we've covered that many, many times. But one little part we don't cover too often that nothing would have happened unless it was done. And the key was what we just read. Jesus came to the fishermen. They fished all night. They're now finished. And they were washing their nets, the Bible says. Let me ask you a question. The Bible says the nets about broke when the kingdom showed up. They got a big catch. The boats about sank. Right. Why is it important to wash your nets? Because if your nets are going to be filled with lots of fish, what's going to happen to them if you didn't wash them? They're going to That's rot. That's right. You have to wash them and dry them, lay them out to dry, or they will rot and grow weak. Mm -hmm. And no matter the fact that God brought the harvest, unless you have the natural side covered, you can miss it. And the sad part is, Drenda, people blame God 
when it actually he did his part, right. but they didn't do their part. Right. Is there a fallacy, Gary, that you see working with people in their finances all these years where people expect God to do the part that they're supposed to be doing? Well, it takes both, of course, not planning, uh, not using wisdom. The natural side is a great part of the puzzle. You know, it's uh, the devils in the details. You ever heard that before? Well, there are details that you have to be aware of. People email us quite often and ask, why aren't I prospering? I'm a believer. I believe the Word of God. Now, this is not to put anyone down, but a lot of times I can barely read their email. Their spelling and grammar is so bad that I know immediately that they're going to have trouble prospering in the earth realm because in the earth realm, you need to know how to spell and write if you're going to communicate. Or at least you spell check. <laughs> or spell check or whatever. You've got to do excellence. You have there to. There has to be excellence. Yes. Excellence. And God wants his people to continue to grow and become excellent. Excellence, integrity, your part of the puzzle. You know, preparation is a big part of the harvest and you have your part to play. Listen to this story. It's an amazing, sad story. It goes back to, let me pull it up here. It goes back to 1972. A four month old Lockheed 1011 TriStar. Remember, that's the, the big jet liner with the, the engine on the tail. Uh, there, I think FedEx still uses those, but a lot of the, most of the airlines have not uh, been using those for a number of years. But four-month-old airplane crashed in Miami, killing all on board. Now, there were three pilots on that plane, Drenda. Very, very experienced pilots. Combined, all three pilots had 50,000 hours of flight time. That is a lot of experience. So it wasn't their first day out. Not their first Not day out. <laughs> when they came into Miami to land this brand new plane, the gear went down, but one of the gear lights, the lights that indicate, you know, you have the two main gears, the front nose gear, uh, one of the lights did not come on, indicating that the gear was actually locked. So the plane went around, didn't land, it took back off and went up to 2,000 feet and began to circle as they began to experiment what was wrong with that landing gear or the landing light. And accidentally, the captain bumped the yoke. It was on autopilot. He bumped the yoke and the autopilot went off without them. They were so distracted by this gear issue that they didn't notice that the autopilot had turned off. And very, very slowly, so slowly they could not perceive it, the plane was dropping maybe 100 feet every two minutes. Mm -hmm. It was just slowly going down. In a decline. In a decline. And this perfectly good, brand new aircraft with 50,000 hours of flight time among the crew just flew right into the ground without them realizing it until the last second, they saw they were about to hit the ground. They said, what happened? And they crashed. Wow. Three guys never saw it. Now, looking at the crash, examining the details, they found out that the problem was not the landing gear, but it was a burned out light bulb for the landing gear indicator. A burned out light bulb, three guys distracted about that they could, they had manual, they had a manual gear they could put wow. down manually. They didn't, didn't do that either. A burned out light bulb, being distracted, the details are important. To be aware of the facts, planes there, plenty of fuel, pilots are there, experience is there. But missing one detail is a good illustration how people's lives crash and burn sometimes. Mm. It's like, you know, everything seems right. I believe the word of God, but you didn't wash your nets. You weren't prepared on your end for that big opportunity. You know, I've, I, we have businesses, you know, and I've uh, been across the desk from clients that were, you know, we handle investments all these years, 30, you know, 30 years, over 30 years now in different things. And in the early days, you have to learn some things. I remember sitting across the desk from clients, you know, wanting to invest millions of dollars and they'd ask me questions and there was a couple of times I couldn't answer them. Do you know what they did? They took their money elsewhere. Right. I had my part to play. Your preparation. My preparation. Mm -hmm. I had to prepare myself to catch the harvest. Right. And so will you. The other side of faith is your side. 
your responsibility. And I love, Gary, when you taught this, you shared the practical parts we need to know to mix with our faith so that our faith and our works are working together for the outcome and the harvest. Right, exactly. And you and I, like you said, we experienced years where we wanted great things and we saw, we saw visions that were way beyond where we were. And as we learned, we had to capture those things. We had to make some changes right. to our processes. I'm sure there was probably a process on that plane that all three Checklist, of them were yeah, not supposed sure. to go troubleshoot. That's somebody right. was Someone thought probably to supposed to keep their the eye on the plane, yeah, that's but right. somebody broke process. That's somebody right. did not that's do. Right. They were all distracted. How many times do we get distracted? How many times has the enemy distracted you, myself, with something that was minute so that we couldn't major on the major thing we were trying to accomplish, but instead we got off as it was in the case of these pilots. They were looking at a, a burnout light bulb, basically, that was creating right. the problem. And the major thing was flying the plane and yet they crashed yep. it. Missed the major and so thing. God doesn't want you to crash. He doesn't want you to miss the promises, the harvest, all the great things that he has for you. And, and the other side of faith care, you tackle that so well, because if anything I've seen in 30 years of ministry, it's that there's people on one side of the ditch or the other. We have people that spiritualize everything and they do nothing in the, in the natural realm. Then there's people that are working in their own strength and doing nothing in the faith realm. And so yeah. when we come back, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to talk more about the other side of faith. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.